Hello, you're watching the Press Preview. It is our first look at tomorrow's front pages. And uh, tonight, we will check out the headlines with the Guardian columnist, Zoe Williams, and also the former Conservative MP, who's now Chief Executive of the charity Business in the Community, Mary McLeod. So, chatting to them in a moment. But first of all, let's take a look at those front pages for you. We're going to begin with the Metro. Reacting to today's widespread travel disruption, the paper has the headline... Air traffic computer chaos. And it's the same story for tomorrow's FT, which suggests the backlog could take a while to clear. Days of chaos after air traffic control meltdown. That's the headline on the front of the Express. And, in fact, similar words on the eye, which also quotes sources from Number 10 saying a cyber attack being the cause is a good working assumption. Travel disruption also featuring, as you can see, on the front of the Telegraph and the Daily Mail flight fiasco to go on for days is the rather depressing headline. Get me out of the air is the Sun's take on it. And the Times also saying disruption could last for days until at least Friday. Well, it's a different story on the front of the mirror on rail ticket office closures and the impact that they will have on elderly customers. From The Guardian, rivers at risk. And the star splashes on controversy surrounding the Spanish football chief, Luis Rubiales, and how his mum has gone on a hunger strike in his defence in a church. And don't forget, you can scan that QR code that you see on screen during the programme. Check out the front pages of tomorrow's papers while you watch us discussing them. And to do that this evening, Zoe Williams and Mary McLeod here in the studio. Lovely to see you. So on exciting. this bank holiday yeah. Monday. Very exciting. Um, so let's start then, shall we, with uh, the travel chaos, uh, a story which uh, broke uh, this morning and has left uh, so many people uh, stranded. It has now been fixed, but, of course, there's a massive backlog as uh, aircraft are in the wrong places. It's so interesting, just from a news perspective, that there's there's very little for them... That, you know, no newspaper can shed any light on what happened. Nobody knows yet. They, they're kind of pretty sure that there was no malfeasance. They're pretty sure that it wasn't a hack attack. They, they, they're pretty sure that it was just an accident. But sometimes the papers just have to reflect what people's experiences are. And they're quite uncomfortable with it because... The, the, you know, there's not a lot to say except what an incredible inconvenience that must be to be stranded for 12 hours. And yet it's on the front of every newspaper, you know, because it's a huge big deal. It's like, the, the, this is people's summer holidays. Yeah, and to happen on a bank holiday um, is particularly bad because so many of us are relying on getting, uh, getting to places we need to get to or getting home. Oh, absolutely, and because we don't know how many days this will take to resolve. So if it's just a slight delay in a flight, most people can handle that. But if it's think flights are cancelled, trying to find another flight, and it's, it could be days, we, we just don't know. So it's the, the personal impact and inconvenience, and it's UK PLC, it's, it's everything that in terms of the, the economy as well and this just doesn't look good for Britain um, that we have this and it's a lot of airports affected a lot of flights um, so it, you know they do need to really understand and get under the skin of how it happened why it happened they say they don't think it's it's a cyber attack but then just either, there are technical glitches and I used to build systems so so these things sometimes happen but it's like really understandable. Well, this, but this needs to be foolproof doesn't it I mean there are, there, there are some things a good that you backup. can accept that, 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 you know, can accept issues going wrong. But when it comes to planes in the sky... Yeah, but and it's about safety, so it's massively important. Do you think it does look bad for the UK? Do you think it looks like, you know, part of a package of the whole United Kingdom being kind of a little bit swamped and chaotic? Or do you think it's just something that could happen to any country? It could, and it's happened to other countries. It happened to France some time ago. I mean, it's so it does happen, and people sort of understand sometimes technology goes wrong, but at the same time, it's the overall, I think, look of it, that it's yeah. just yet another thing over on top of lots of other things that aren't going right at the moment. But they, arguably, they, they could solve it quite quickly if they just, you know, really understand what the, where the problem was, but also find out where is the infrastructure investment, what is the backup plan. They, they would always do stress testing, do risk analysis. They would 
they should have all those processes in place. So what happened here and why did all those flights have to be have to be cancelled? And and it includes because it's yes, it's the UK and 14 airports and but it's also that oceanic bit. So mm. the, the the west, the the northeast of the Atlantic in essence. Um, so a lot of planes are flying into that airspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course the knock-on effect is is global, isn't it? Um, yeah. uh, of, of this. Um, we shall find out more, I'm sure, yeah. in uh, in uh, coming days. Uh, let's move on to the FT uh, Zoe, uh, the latest twist in the Donald Trump uh, saga, a trial date has been set and it's quite an ex uh, 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 a significant day. Well, quite. I mean, Trump would have been hoping, and this this is sort of magical thinking on his part, but he would have been hoping that he could have kicked the trial dates to after the, the, the um, Super Tuesday when the Republicans choose their candidate. Indeed, he was hoping to kick the trial dates until after the election so that he could win the election, according to him, and then pardon himself of any federal charge. Now, you know, technically, there's no problem with him doing that. There's no kind of um, constitutional problem with him doing that, even though it's obviously completely unprecedented in American history. But there's a massive problem with him doing it if the trial is before the election even happens, if the trial is before the Republican candidacy is even chosen. Mm. Because he, <laughs> he faces the really unlovely prospect of actually being found guilty before he has a chance to secure the nomination. In which case, the, his whoever does get chosen probably won't pardon him. So this is extremely dicey for him. And if he had, you know, some kind of sense of reason, he would be worried. Whether or not he is, history doesn't relate. Yeah, set for 4th of March, the eve of uh, Super Tuesday. Yeah, and of course he'll always make out that he's not worried at all and that this yeah. is all a conspiracy and a witch hunt against him. And, uh, but, and, and the incredible thing is, is that the poll numbers rise for him. Um, with every issue like this that comes up, um, yeah. It just and so it, it is quite terrifying actually because he's building this whole martyr narrative where he's you know being burnt at the stake of the kind of liberal orthodoxy and everything's a lie and he's the only person telling the truth and the election was rigged and etc cetera, etc cetera. and so almost the worst things go for him the more his narrative of persecution is reinforced and and you do see his numbers go up but the truth is. The judges can't behave other than they adjudicate. But, but do you, do you just not think the district attorneys are also? We'd be, we were talking about this a couple of days ago. The, the, the DAs are politicising the law as well, aren't they? By by pushing this. Are they though? I mean, you have to at, at some stage. If the rule of law means anything at all, you have to you have to prosecute it to the limits of its capability. You and there are say, certain things he does have to yeah, answer exactly. to. Exactly. You can't say, well, it's going to look bad if we prosecute him. Therefore, it doesn't matter whether he incited the. the storming of, cap of the capital it just it's just not going to fly but he'll probably get the nomination and so no do you think so i mean I if he's so. actually i think he probably will be because there's a lot of republicans who know which side their bread is buttered and they're not going to want to fight an election with a guy in prison yeah <laughs> no one's standing out of the pack so far though are they no, I mean... That's the other, I mean, that's the other issue. Um, let's move on to yeah, uh, sure. politics back at home. And uh, the Daily Express, um, uh, uh, two pages inside about how the Home Secretary plans to tackle uh, the small boats. What's, uh, what's the latest plan, Zoe? Well, this is, the, the, this is actually the most straightforward and upfront um, Braverman has been, certainly today. Um, she, she gave some very squirrely interviews earlier in the day in which, you know, she was asked directly if the European Court of Human Rights objects to the small boats policy, whether that's Rwanda, whether that's the, you know, Bibby Stockholm, whatever that is, if you meet resistance from Europe, what is your response going to be? And she was giving this weird answer, which was, everybody knows where I stand vis-à-vis -vis the, the, the European Court of Human Rights. Now, essentially, she, she's ahead of being fired by Rishi Sunak, trying to prepare the ground as the person who wants to take us out of the ECHR, right? I mean, that's what... That's how she's trying to frame herself. And she's, she can't say it out loud because it's not government policy. But she does want to say it out loud because she wants to mark herself out as the person who thinks that. So this is some massive fighting talk and, from and, her. And today there was other things like the tagging, where it's not, it's not government policy, but yeah. yet uh, she's putting those things out there as that there's things that are 
part of all, all the raft of things that she will look at um, to try and resolve this. I mean, keep in mind, this is one of the big five things, and three of them are economic. So one of the other big things yeah. that the Prime Minister is saying we are going to sort, we're going to stop the boats. I mean, that is quite a declaration. Um, to say, and, 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 and I think we all want something sorted on this because it's lives that are, that are being lost as, as part of it. Um, so whichever side you look at it, you know, something has to be done. But, uh, and so I think what she'll want to be seen is, is that she's taking action or that she's showing that she's trying to do something. The thing is, though, she doesn't have time before the next election to take us out of the European Court of Human no. Rights. There's no, absolutely no way. So if she's sabre-rattling like this, she's not doing so as a member of the serving Conservative government. She's doing so as the leader of the next opposition. And that's definitely where she's headed with this. She's okay. just trying to kind of cast herself as that person who mm. will be the next face of the Conservative Party. Really interesting. Which okay. I think will be a disaster for yeah. the Conservative uh, listen, Party. We've just, 30, <laughs> we've just got 30 seconds left, um, and it'd be nice to reflect on uh, this Notting Hill Carnival. Did you go, Mary? I didn't, and I, and I'm, I feel ashamed I didn't, because I've been before and absolutely loved it. And, of course, this year was uh, a special moment because of the anniversary um, or for Windrush, and therefore, you know, something that we absolutely need to keep remembering. Um, there's all the celebrations and the vibrancy and, uh, of, and the music and everything that goes with uh, the Notting Hill Carnival, but there's a serious message underneath that, uh, that we've got to remember all the, 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 what happened with the Windrush um, generation about them coming and, in, into the, the country and therefore, you know, are we supporting them in the right way possible? Um, and giving them what they deserve as part of that. So I think it's um, a, you know, uh, important to just keep remembering that the, the Windrush story underneath it. Yeah. What do you think, Zoe? Well, we've got some pictures. It, it, well, it, I wonder what that noise was. It's the band. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not just Windrush, is it? It's like every single year the carnival happens, it's sort of... It, it, it makes the point that this used to be an extremely divided event full of tension, full of racial tension, going back 50 years, 60 years, and it has turned into an incredibly united, beautiful thing. And, that, and, I, and I think, you know, people take a lot from that, even if there are still so many unresolved things with Windrush, with Grenfell, even with, with, with that standing... It's a, it's a beautiful thing to see. And we see it as in business with, you know, we've got a race charter that over a thousand companies have signed up to. People are saying, we want to be united in this. We want to do something and make sure we're putting the right policies in place to, to help those um, who have come into this country or who have got, um, of course, a, any sort of ethnic minority heritage. Um, really, really important as part of this, but, but, yeah. but people are, are getting behind it and it's, po it's positive to hear that, but many people would say we're still a very intolerant nation and that we are, uh, uh, um, in many aspects, a racist nation still, but you're, you're saying you don't, you don't believe that. I, I mean, I think there's a huge amount of racist language that banded about for political gains. It, it's certainly by the kind of new right. If you just look at the Conservative candidate for London mayor, she spoke in, like, openly racist terms about the Notting Hill Carnival and how it was predisposed to violence. And Labour MPs complained about th that this week because it was the, the language was kind of scary. Yeah. So I'm not saying there isn't still racist... The racism doesn't still have currency in politics, but I think the actual underlying, as a nation, we, we're disgusted by it. I think yeah. we really, we really are. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's a good thing, is that we're disgusted by it. Um, but a, there's still some, uh, you, know, uh, you know, awful stories of people with race, uh, people who uh, have racist attacks or racist comments. So there is still racism in this country. So the more that we can do to try and and lift that narrative up and, and make people more aware of it. Yeah. Um, as we're doing with the, the, the race charter, you know, it, it really is important to say what, what more can be done to make sure there is a really united force and if people aren't feeling that they're yeah. included, yeah. then yeah. we need to do something about it. I'm sure she would, she would deny that she's, she's racist, but certainly there has been that concern about those, those comments. Thank you both for the moment. Um, plenty more still to come on the press preview, including this story. It is uh, in the... Guardian, I think, uh, sexual assault inquiry over football chief's kiss at uh, talking about Rubialis and more in a couple of minutes. Rubialis and more in a couple of minutes.
Hello, part two of the press preview. Uh, Zoe and Mary are still with us and we're going to talk uh, football and the ongoing uh, Spanish scandal, Mary, the front of The Guardian. Actually, the papers are all slightly behind because there's been a development uh, since the first editions came out. We know that the, uh, the Spanish Football uh, Association saying that he should hand in his resignation, uh, but The Guardian's uh, take on all of it is that there is going to be a sexual assault inquiry over the... Uh, the now infamous Rubiales kiss. Yeah, and absolutely right. I mean, I think I'm just really angry about this story because it should not have carried on for several days. Um, we all know what we saw on television. It was the first of all, it was the crotch grabbing up antics that, mm. uh, you know, in front of the, the Queen, in front of young children, in front of the whole world. Really, is that what you think is the right behaviour? And then this, which is either sexual harassment or assault or, um, and a, but, but yeah, I mean, if this was happening in business, they would have been fired on the spot. It would just have not been accepted. So it's, it's a real shame for the, the, the Spanish football ladies. I mean, I think they've done such a brilliant job. Um, and great that our lionesses came out to support them really early on. Um, but good on the, the Spanish female footballers, because they've, they've, in essence, gone, we're not playing until until he gets um, fired. So it's it's about time and it's and and the problem is it makes Spain look bad as part of it. They're not dealing with it quickly. But uh, I'm hoping that this now shows that there might be some movement in it because it's just unacceptable. But he still behavior. seems to be standing firm, doesn't he? Well, he must have made the calculation that he could get her to say that it was consensual if he just stood his ground enough and certainly you know when he was when he made that first statement when he said i will not resign like eight times on when was it friday mm. um he, he did not sound like a man who thought this was going to happen he definitely thought that he was going to be able to railroad the whole discourse not just jenny but everybody and it just didn't pan out that way but it's, it's interesting because I was talking to my son who's a teenager about it and you know obviously any chance to side with a football guy over anybody else on earth he will take and but he said you know if he was a good guy who made a mistake they, this wouldn't have happened. It feels like there's been a build-up. Exactly. Over, over, so over even though, time. and I think what we're going to see over the coming days, which he's going to have to resign, right, because the mm. FA has told him to, so there's, no, there's not really any kind of wiggle room. Yeah. Over the coming days, I think we're going to find out why he was such an unpopular character to begin mm. with. Mm. Um, and, it's and, inter you know, it's so interesting that the, the Football Federation supported him and, and were accusing uh, uh, her of being a liar two days ago. And now... They've obviously um, changed their mind and are saying that he's got to go. But just very quickly, uh, front page of the star, his mum is backing him. What's she doing? <laughs> She's <laughs> gone on a hunger strike in a church. Uh, which just just goes from the sublime to the ridiculous, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> I just think, you know, I mean, I guess that she's a mother and wants to support her son, but it makes her not look particularly good if that's the sort of behaviour that he has. So, yeah, so backing I, it, some, well, some, it, some mamas do happen. <laughs>